Mr. McCoy here with African Folktale Theater number six, entitled Adamu's Mountain. Once upon a time, there was a very large hyena who lived on a mountain. The hyena's dwelling place was a cave in the mountainside, and it was so big that a man could stand upright in it. At the foot of the mountain was a village of farmers and their families. All the people of the village feared the large hyena, and it was their custom to bring many presents to the cave and to treat the hyena with great respect. One day, a man called Adamu came from another village. He asked the people why they took presents to the mountain, but they would not tell him. I shall go to see for myself, said Adamu. Adamu went to the mountain. Climbing the mountainside, he found the cave and entered it. He walked far inside. Suddenly, he looked back and saw the very large hyena. Let me out, cried Adamu, but there was no way out. The hyena stood between Adamu and the door of the cave. Why have you entered my house? The hyena asked in an angry voice. Adamu could make no reply. He was too frightened. You are my prisoner, said the hyena and he put Adamu in the food store at the back of the cave. Later, I shall eat you, said the hyena, locking the door. Meanwhile, Adamu's family, who had been traveling with him, wondered where Adamo could be. But his brother had heard him planning to go up the mountain. After two days, the brother went to the chief of the village. Let me go to the mountain and look for my brother, he asked the chief. We shall look for him, the chief replied, but we must take a present. The brother gave the chief one of Adamu's fat goats. The chief, the brother, and many people went up the mountainside until they reached the cave. The chief took the goat to the cave and called in a loud voice, begged the hyena to let Adamu come out. Suddenly, Adamu came out. No one ever saw the hyena again. When the people went back to take presents, the cave had disappeared from the side of the mountain. Ever afterwards, it was called Adamu's Mountain. Turn to your fellow African. What is your opinion of Adamu's Mountain? Coming next is an African folktale within a folktale. Keep watching. And now, in conjunction with Adamu's Mountain, is an extra African folktale related to the one we just listened to. In the olden days, the thunder and lightning lived on the earth amongst all the other people, but the king made them live at the far end of the town, as far as possible from other people's houses. The thunder was an old mother sheep, and the lightning was her son, a ram. Whenever the ram got angry, he used to go about and burn houses and knock down trees. He even did damage on the farms and sometimes killed people. Whenever the lightning did these things, his mother used to call out to him in a very loud, angry voice to stop and not to do any more damage. But the lightning did not care in the least for what his mother said and, when he was in a bad temper, used to do a large amount of damage. At last, the people could stand it no longer and complain to the king. So the king made a special order that the sheep, Thunder, and her son, the ram, Lightning, should leave the town and live in the far bush. This did not do much good, as when the ram got angry, he still burnt the forest, and the flames sometimes spread to the farms and consumed them. So the people complained again, and the king banished both the lightning and the thunder from the earth, and made them live in the sky where they could not cause so much destruction. Ever since, when the lightning became angry, he commits damage as before, but you can hear his mother, the thunder, rebuking him and telling him to stop. Sometimes, however, when the mother has gone away some distance from her naughty son, you can still see that he is angry and is doing damage, but his mother's voice cannot be heard. So what is your opinion of this folktale within a folktale? Share with your fellow Africans.
when next we gather for African Folktale Theater, it will be The Man with the Seven Dogs. It will be our seventh African Folktale. Be in the audience for it.